Well, hello, I hope you are having a wonderful day today. If you know it, say it with me. I got my coffee, I got my Bible. Of course, I have you. Welcome to Acts chapter nine. This is one of the big chapters in the book of Acts, and it actually talks about one of the greatest heroes in Acts, and it's not Paul. We're gonna talk about him in just a second, today is National Make Sure I Saw Yeah, Cheer Up the Lonely Day. And that is definitely what this chapter is about. So I want to go ahead and say, if you know anybody who could use a little pick-me-up, a little text message, a little phone call, I would make sure you send it to them on National Cheer Up the Lonely Day. I'm going to tell you something that I did. Now, I want to tell you, you would not want to be one of my kids because I'm constantly challenging my, my girls, all right? I, I look at my girls as, as part of the legacy God has given me, and so I'm constantly challenging them to be better than their daddy. And so I, you wouldn't want to be one of my kids, okay? I do stuff to them all the time. All good, just challenges, you know? But not long ago, I was at the church uh, with my, my girls and a couple of their friends, and we had this opportunity where we needed to go from one side of the auditorium to the other and the lights weren't on. The lights were on the other side of the auditorium. And I could have went there, but instead I looked at one of my girls and I said, hey, why don't you take your iPod, it has a flashlight, and go and turn those lights on for us. No, no daddy, I can't, I can't do that, I'm too scared. I was like, no, no, you gotta do it. You gotta face your fears, it's gonna be okay. No daddy, I can't do it. No, you do it, I want you to do it. Okay, daddy, <laughs> you know, and I knew they were going to be okay, but she didn't know, right? And so all of her friends like, oh, oh goodness, oh, oh, I'm so scared for you, which made her feel even better. And so she goes, and I can see that where the light's go, and I see she's bobbing and weaving through chairs and going through aisles and all this kind of stuff. And so she finally gets to them, and she turns the lights up, and when she turns the lights up, She's got the biggest smile on her face. You would have thought she had climbed Mount Everest. And her friends start going, yay! You know, and she's the hero of the moment, you know? And then she looks at me and she gives me this wink like, thank you, Daddy. I got, that's good. And so she just strolling like a peacock up in there, right? And so it was great. And the lesson I was able to tell her later is the lesson is, is you are braver than you realize. And you can do more than you think you can. And my hope is, is that we we experiment with those things in these very contained, very easy environments so that when her courage is called on later in life, she's better for it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm putting a little bit on turning a light switch on. I'm That's just me. Okay. But that's what I think about when I think about the story today. I'm going to tell you something. I want to start the slow clap for my man Ananias. Okay. This is what happens. Saul is on his way to kill some more Christians. All right? He's on his way to Damascus. It's bad. He, he's not good. And the Bible says that Jesus showed up and a bright light like threw uh, Saul. It blinded him so much he fell off of the animal he was riding. It, it was so bright that it apparently burned his corneas or at least like a flash. Uh, you know, it, it seared on him because he couldn't see. And when something like scales came over his, his eyes, probably scabs from where it burned, and for three days he couldn't see. So they had to lead him by the hand to Damascus. And while he is there praying and fasting, listen to what happens. Chapter 9, verse 13, God tells this guy, Ananias, he says, listen, I want you to go pray for this guy Saul. Maybe you've heard of him. You know, the other guy killing all the Christians, the guy who you heard was coming to your town, the guy you were terrified of. Yeah, I need you to go to his house and pray for him. And Ananias said what all of us would. Yes, Lord, I shall go. No, that is not what he said. The first two words of this verse is, but Lord. It's his way of saying, thanks God, but no. No thanks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, but Lord Ananias exclaimed, I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem. And he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. In other words, God, are you not paying attention? This joker's crazy. <laughs> he wants to kill me 
and my family and my family's family and everybody else. Uh, thanks God, but now, <laughs> no. And, but but here's the thing: God doesn't say, "Oh, you're right. I wasn't paying attention. Silly me. Never mind." He said, "Yeah, go ahead and go anyway. I got it all figured out." And I wonder how many times in our lives can we really identify with this? We get ready to walk into something. I, I truly believe. Everybody watching this video is either coming out of a storm, they're in the middle of a storm, or they're getting ready to go into one, okay? Because life is full of storms and sunshine. It's, it's, it's everywhere, all around us. And the, the situation is, is that God never said we would have a stress-free life. He just said He would go with us. And I wonder how many times we've been in situations when we can see the storm on the horizon. We can see something bad coming, and God tells us to serve Him. Do something for him. And we say what this God-honoring man of God says. But Lord, <laughs> I mean, come on. You want me to forgive that person? But Lord, you want me to still have joy in the middle of all these cutbacks? But Lord, you, you want me to have to consider keeping my kids home this fall when the only thing that was keeping me sane was them going back to school in the fall? <laughs> But Lord, you know, I mean, come on, surely. But here's the thing. Just like what I did with my daughter, God wouldn't send us to something if he didn't already trust us that we could see it through. God didn't choose Ananias because he wanted to torture him. God chose Ananias because who knows, he might have been the only person in that city just crazy for Jesus enough to go ahead and go because he didn't know. He, did, he didn't know what to expect when he walked through that door, except other than what he thought he heard God say. But he knew Ananias was just crazy enough to obey. And just like that, I knew if my daughter would walk across that room and turn those lights on, not only would she be proud of herself, but just one more drop in the bucket, she'd realize that she's braver than she realized. And then I also knew she was going to enjoy that victory lap of seeing all of her friends be impressed, too, you know? And I wonder how many times God lets us get into situations, not because he's trying to hurt us, but because he knows we can stand under the fire. He knows we're just crazy enough for Jesus to make that phone call. We're crazy enough for Jesus to have that joy in the middle of that difficult work environment. We're crazy enough for Jesus to serve him anyway. And he also knows we're braver than we realize. So what if, whatever it is you're going through today, it isn't because God's mad at you, it isn't because he's forgotten about you. It isn't because you're a glutton for punishment. How about this? It's not because of the sin that you've committed in the past. What if it's because God trusts you to see it all the way through? I don't know what this chapter is going to mean to you, but I know that it encouraged me to realize that whatever God sees you to, he trusts you to make it all the way through. All right? I want to know down in the comments below what spoke to you today. I don't know what it's going to be, but i tell you what I do know, and that is that God loves you more than you realize. He's for you more than you understand. You're probably doing better than you realize. You know why I say it with me? Because you got up one more day. You know what else I know? God has not changed his mind about you and he's not going to, okay? I love you so much. I can't wait to see you right here tomorrow on Daily 